Do you know the importance of the Holy Spirit in your life? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. There was a great race between a team of the wise and a team of the foolish. The wise people won by a mile, so the foolish people hired an expert to figure out what went wrong. He reported that the wise people had one person steering and eight people rowing, while they had eight people steering and only one person rowing. Aha, said the foolish people. We immediately restructured their team. Now they had one senior manager, seven management consultants, and one rower. In the rematch, the wise people won by two miles. After further intensive consultations, the foolish people fired their rower. In this story, reality was staring the team of the foolish in the face, but they just couldn't see it. The fully lived life is all about seeing, seeing differently, seeing things as they really are. It has been said that we do not see things as they are, we see things as we are. Marcel Proust wisely put it when he said, The real voyage of discovery consists not in seeking new landscapes, but in having new eyes. In today's Gospel reading, a Pharisee named Nicodemus visits Jesus at night. Nicodemus was a Jewish rabbi and one of the 70 members of the Sanhedrin, the highest legal, judicial, and religious council then. The Pharisees despised Jesus, but Nicodemus, the same person who argued for a fair trial for Jesus and who assisted Joseph of Arimathea to bury Jesus, became a believer. He came in the early part of Jesus' ministry with a strong belief that following the Mosaic Law contained in the Pentateuch, first five books of the Old Testament, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, was sufficient for eternal salvation. But Jesus tells him that one has to be born again in the Holy Spirit, that is, to be baptized and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, to be truly deserving of eternal salvation. What Jesus means to also tell us is that we must let ourselves be constantly led by the Holy Spirit in all our thoughts, words, and deeds, so that such conform to God's plan. Nicodemus' story encourages us to go against the prevailing tide of individualism, attachment to material things, and the moral relativism that prevails today. Moral relativism in its simple explanation is when we believe that there is no absolute truth, that we base everything on our ever-changing standards when they benefit us, when we constantly rationalize our actions that are unrighteous. An example would be not to pay taxes because we don't see it benefiting the people, or not giving our tithes because we see some flaws in the leadership of the community, or bribing people to get what we want, or feeding our addictions because they help us cope, in quotation marks, with our problems. Jesus reminds us today that our true source of life is God, and our proper response to God's call to life is to let the Holy Spirit control our life. In a practical sense, our prayer time is a moment to be born from above. We drop all things aside, our mobile phones, calls and messages, our Netflix movies, our business in other words, to listen to and heed the Holy Spirit's promptings. When you let the Holy Spirit guide you, Life takes on a new meaning. You are no longer hemmed in by the noise of business, but you hear the hum of peace, contentment, and joy rowing gently in your heart. Don't you experience that when you sit idly on a boat, marveling at the stillness of your surroundings, and broken only by the sound of the paddle lapping up the water on your side? That is the kind of peace we all want to achieve as the boat of our life gently slashes through the waves of problems that confront us. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in Heavenly Father, help me to conform to the transforming power of your Holy Spirit, so that I may always do your holy will for me. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.